Hi and welcome back to our GCP Mindset channel and all topics on clinical research. Today we'll talk about Rule 5 of the responsibilities of the investigator according to good clinical practice. More after the break. Rule 5. You should predict the potential for recruiting the required number of suitable subjects and log patient data accurately. Get the necessary information prior to the start of the study in order to be able to predict the realistic potential number of subjects. Do not guess, but rather the information should be founded on past and current knowledge. The list of inclusion and exclusion criteria, for example, enables you, in combination with your medical records, to assess the frequency of patients with specific diseases who fulfill the inclusion profile of the study and therefore may be considered for participation. The frequency of patients with a certain disease alone is no valid foundation for an estimate because exclusion criteria exist, preventing you from including all patients with this disease in the study. You must comply with these exclusion criteria as strictly as with the inclusion criteria. If you need more information on subject selection, then do not hesitate to ask the sponsor. As soon as you've got all the information you need, you can make a good assessment of the number of subjects you should expect by means of the rise of patients with the suitable profile documented in medical records in previous years. The comparison of the number of potential and actual trial subjects is likewise helpful. Unrealistic estimates of potential numbers of subjects automatically cause problems. An example, a sponsor needs 100 patients for a study and the specification for the recruitment potential is 50-100 patients. The sponsor is thus faced with a dilemma. If he only recruits 50 patients, he will need at least a second trial site with the same number of subjects to achieve the planned sample size. And if he only recruits 25 subjects, a more comprehensive recruitment or even an extension of the study is inevitable. However, for certain indications, as in the case of influenza vaccination studies, only a tight time slot is available for the study in the form of the influenza vaccination season, respectively, and if the necessary number of subjects is not achieved during this period, the study needs to be restarted from scratch in the following influenza season. Thus, a realistic estimate of the subject recruitment rate determines the budget planning, the number of trial sites involved, and also the number of countries involved. If investigators and sponsor estimate realistically, the required sample sizes can, as a rule, be achieved. Also consider social events regarding the recruitment. Not to be underestimated is the negative influence, for example, that the Soccer World Cup may have on the recruitment rate for studies for certain indications because patients are not interested in studies during this time but prefer to watch TV. In order to improve recruitment, tools such as posters, newspaper advertisements, handouts or leaflets can be used. However, all this recruitment material must first be approved by the Ethics Committee before use. For study-related information on your website, also make sure that the information on the study has been approved by the Ethics Committee before making it public. When enrolling patients, you must create a subject identification log. This document must always be up to date because it fulfills an important safety function. For example, if a study has to be discontinued from one day to the next due to unpredictably occurring severe side effects, the data of the patients stated in the subject identification log can be used to help them recover quickly by checking in the medical records and to contact them to stop their study medication. Like all other safety-related aspects of a study, a subject identification log of inspectors that is not fully up to date is considered a major finding. So much about the Rule 5 for investigators. We will look into each of the other 12 rules in future videos, so stay tuned. We hope that we could give you some interesting information and look forward to see you next time. Goodbye.